I don't know if I'm born ready. I'm looking at my phone. I'm just not doing the right thing. Oh, I need to maximize the screen, bruh. Maximize the screen for maximum effect. Hello. I think we're live. Welcome to another episode of the Whiskey Untitled. Cheers. Hey, can we clink a little? You and me? All right. Cool. Cheers. Wait, did you smell that? Do you smell that? You know what that is? You know what that is? That's our topic for today. That's great. That's right. We're going to be talking about quintessential whiskeys. Not just for like whiskey enthusiasts, but like if you have that friend who's like, hey, man, I'm into whiskeys. And it's like, hey, have you tried blah, blah, blah? And they're like, I haven't. The It's the whiskey that makes you wonder like, what? Are you sure you haven't had that? Are you sure you're a whiskey enthusiast and not a poser? Anyways, that's where we're going. Let's get to drinking. Corona. Wow. I'm still, what still surprised how much I like this. I know. I, I got really excited, and I just wanted to have everybody take their glass and smack it to, go for a crazy smack it to their TV or their I phone. Hey, That's exciting. What's up, Tolv? There you go. This smells like boring, and it just tastes simple, but it's actually pretty good. Wait, wait. it tastes like boring? It's just simple. Yeah, this tastes like boring. Ah, man. It tastes like boring. It's not It's never a good sign when someone says it tastes like boring. No, it's, it's just not exciting. It's it's uh, very, like, three-noted. But, I mean, that's what you get, right? It's a Welcome to American yeah, Whiskey. Well, yeah, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Boring and simple sounds uh, amazing. Hey, guys, thank you so it's much. It's how I wish life could be. Tolv, Voltry, Christian. Um, just want to make sure, because I know you guys oh, had complaints buttery. before. Is Hopefully, my Drink Cayman's volume is good. I know Wally's is good, so. Just to hope All our volumes are good. good. How's the volumes for you guys? Yeah. Also, down in the comments, uh, I don't remember what the question was that I had. Oh, so we're going to be going along, and as we go along these whiskeys, you should totally post in the comments what you think are certain quintessential whiskeys. And I broke mine down into categories. I don't know how Charles did his, but um, you guys should definitely also post like, hey, I think, yada, blah, blah, blah. And then we can all enjoy together. All right. So um, before we start, you know. Not even high, bro. I did have that Cohiba, though. (laughs) Is it more than tobacco in a Cohiba? Uh, Right now, it is 324, uh, 2020. Um, Right now, there is a sale going on for Scotch Malt Whiskey Society for free shipping. I took advantage of it, and I think Wally did. (laughs) Do you have any new bottles from them? Look, I actually have a lot of new bottles, and the reason I ordered Society is because of free shipping. Honest to goodness, every time I go into a shopping cart with SMWSA, and it says $29 for that first bottle for shipping, I'm always like, uh, do I really want to do this? It's a malted. So, Yeah. yeah, so today I did it. I did a thing. I actually have six new bottles, so I did a little oh, yeah, bit of shopping. You, oh, yeah, you did. All right. So yeah. mine are still arriving. I did put my money where my mouth is. I did order some bottles, multiples, because of the fact that they had free shipping. And the shipping for me is like almost 100 bucks. So for me to capitalize on that, I ordered multiple. Just makes sense, yeah. Yeah. So uh, you got another week to do it. Yeah, so. what, what do you got? Also, we're not sponsored by SMWSA. It's just free yeah. shipping is a good deal. Yeah, free shipping. And <laughs> uh, I think it was that Caskers has $5 off on certain things. And if you spend $200, you get free shipping. There's a bunch of other websites that do free shipping on certain amounts. So this is probably the best time to buy whiskey. To, to take advantage, advantage of free of shipping. So just, just FYI. Because the average bottle weighs three and a half pounds with the liquid inside, yeah, so plus it's kind of some places can't prices ship, ship because they're shaped weird. A lot of companies are doing shipping alcohol, so I think they may have removed a ban or some type of thing with that with alcohol. So good. I think that's why we're seeing more and more. There's an Anything else? Uh, kind of. Yeah, kind of. We'll well, we'll get thinking, so you're thinking about that in a. I, I think you're thinking of like quintessential things that you've tasted, but yeah, you got the right idea, Kevin. That's, that's essentially where we're going. Yeah. But um, you want to get to these? Yeah. Well, Wait, do have you, you? Do you have any new bottles at all? No. So mine haven't arrived yet because I live on okay. the other coast. I'll do five of the new bottles, and then bottle number six actually segues us right into today's topic. <gasps> wow, it's like you planned this. Go for it. It's like I was in the shower and I came up with this idea. All right, so um, you did. I'll go in the order that I got the bottles. Yeah, kind of. All right, so uh, kind of. It's got it backwards. Kind of sideways. So the first bottle I got, I actually got this from Paul John. So I did a live stream of this on Instagram because they sent this to me. It's the Nirvana, um, unpeated Paul John. I thought that this would be like a sixty or seventy dollar bottle. So I was tasting it and I was like, man, this is this is pretty good actually. Yeah. And then I found out it's only thirty dollars and I was like. This is actually amazing for $30, flavor-wise. That's their um, 
I want to say entry, but that is their bottle to go into cocktails. That's what I. Yeah, no, use. and it's weird because Sazerac owns forty nine percent of their company. They can own more than fifty because of India rules with rules. India. Yep. But yeah, Sazerac Buffalo Trace is actually like pumping this out. So when I got a box from them, I was like, "What is this?" But then I opened it and saw this, and I was like, "Okay, this is pretty sweet." And yeah, COVID is just actually, short for Corona Virus. Older, right? 18 would Z's, be older. D O V I D, and then number 19, because it's just any cold, essentially, or flu virus that comes from. Yeah, you got you got animals. it backwards a bit, Malted. It's used, it's the younger numbers are the older ones. No, I get what Malted is saying though. It's just like age and whiskey. You know, yeah, the the, the older it is, the better. And so I'm a big Amrut fan too. But uh, give this Paul John a try. Like for 30 bucks, like I'm like I'll probably go buy a second bottle of this just to be like okay. So I did wasn't just send one in the mail like this one. Yeah. Um. Okay, and then I bought three bottles on SMWS, yes. so I'll go through those in the order that I think makes sense. Uh, this is what I posted today uh, on the Instagram, swirl, it's yeah. the Big Swirl. So this is, uh, I may have asked Ben what's in this, uh, and he may actually not know, which is kind of funny. But this has a bunch of interesting stuff that's blended into it, and then it was aged in first fill sherry casks. For, uh, they aged it for like a year or something. Yeah, so, so that one, that bottle is, was very interesting because it's a 10-year statement that's a 10-year blended. Uh, correct. And it's also... Only Sherry cast. I don't know if it's just Oloroso or Pedro, but I think it's just Oloroso. It just says Sherry cast. So, so that's yeah, interesting. I'm not worried about full, it. Full on Sherry blend, ten years, and it was under hundred. It's like ninety. It was eighty bucks. Eighty, 80 bucks. bucks. Yeah, yeah. What's up, Scotch Test Dummies? Oh yeah, yeah, they had they had fun on Tracy's birthday too. Uh, second bottle. Uh, no, sorry, third bottle that I got this yep. week is the Scotch Wine Society Salty Chalk Mallow. I bought this because it said marshmallow, so yeah, like twenty six dot one twenty eight. Um second fill barrel ex bourbon, seven year Highland. So it's Kleinalish. But Good. we'll see how it is. It should be seven pretty good. Interesting. And then this last one, or second to last one, uh banana split with sprinkles. You I literally bought it because of the name. Yeah. So if it does taste like bananas though, because they claim it bananas and cocoa, so I'm like chocolate covered bananas, this should be baller. What's the um, eighty eight twenty two, it's Spayburn. What's up? What's a cast? Uh, refill hogshead, ex bourbon. Okay. So that makes sense for the for the banana yeah, and the chocolate. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. Interesting. And then one more bottle before the transition bottle, yeah, which yeah. is a weird way to put it. Uh, so locally here in Maryland, since we've been locked down, what's up, Ben? Um, hey, Ben. I picked up a bottle from a local bar that was still open to sell bottles, but they weren't open to do anything else. Like they had no food inside was or Jack Rose? anything. So no, it was a Dry Eighty Five. This one's okay. in Annapolis. So I just it's like twenty minutes from my house. Like to get to the bar like in the middle of annapolis gotcha. so i drove down there uh it was really easy to find parking and picked up two bottles one bottle is this knob creek right here so yeah. i bought a knob creek 13 year from them they picked and it was really good uh this one's a 15 year and 15 and a half year i tried it at my buddy's house because yeah. he recommended it and it, it's all right i think i should have saved it on this one okay it, it's not bad it's just not it's not as magical like the 13 was like okay this is cool yeah and this 15 was a little more like mm, kind of chilling yeah. Uh, for me, man, just it's been really hard for me to get sort get behind store picks now. I don't know why. Yes, yeah, so I so I've always had bad luck with store picks. So when I get a good one, I'm like, all right. What's interesting? But is, I have two two Eagle Rare store picks that are horrible. So what's interesting is the fact that, um, from what I've been told, when people do store picks here in the U.S. anyway, they they taste it almost at full uh, full strength and then they water it down, but they don't correct. Cut, they That's... don't cut it to that forty or forty five that they normally bottle it at. So they're so, experiencing something different from what the finished wood so is. So the, the problem is there's inconsistency across the board. Like some places, so like this bar, I, I know them because the owner, he'll, they'll go to the distilleries yep. and they'll pick them there. So they're trying them at cast strength for sure. And they try to bottle them as close to cast strength as possible. Like these aren't cast strength, but the maker's pick that they have right now is cast strength. Yeah, it depends um, on what company and how they want to do it. So And then a lot of a lot of uh, like local other liquor stores, what they do is they just get vials in the mail and then they make picks yeah. from that. So it's not always the best. That's and right. also malted, it's, it's not hard to turn urine into drinking water. You can actually drink your pee twice before it becomes quasi-toxic. So uh, you can skip the whole conversion thing. Just pee in your mouth. But, wow. New facts. Yeah. Like, educational show. Yeah, sorry about that. There's actually a lot of weird facts running around my head right now. But to segue Life into straw, the Life straw. topic of the show, the other bottle I picked up from Dry 85, yeah. a bottle that I've never bought from before the brand. Okay. And then I got a lot of flack on Instagram. Really never bought the 13-year? Thank you, all the DMs. I, I haven't been practicing. I've been practicing like R. Kelly. Remember when R. Kelly saved that girl's life because she got stung by the jellyfish and he peed on her? Oh, so brave. So, um... Yep. 
<laughs> so, so uh, yeah. So I bought this for the first time. I've never purchased a wild turkey, which is why you never see me post wild turkey pictures at Thanksgiving. But this year, I am prepared. Boom. Also, it's really, really boring. You tried but, it? But, uh... Oh, yeah, you posted yeah, it. Yeah, I'm drinking... And I'm drinking some right now. It, it's, uh... I mean, it's just boring... It's just boring bourbon. It, it's like... It's not... There's no magic to it. There's no... Oh, ugh. Maybe compared to a regular one, I shouldn't have got a single barrel to start, obviously, trying wild turkey. But, uh, it's, it's good. But if the rest of wild turkey is worse than this, then, like, why would you drink it? <laughs> no, no, fair, 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 fair. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, yeah, again, so I realized when all these people were DMing me that this is like this is a staple that I've missed out on, and so people were like, "How have you not tried oh, the wild like, turkey?" What, Jack Daniel's old number seven, right? Yeah, uh, JD. So I t- so coming from somebody who didn't drink alcohol at a young age, yep. to me, JD was m- JD and Johnny Walker Blue much more popular across the board than wild turkey. Wild turkey. I never even heard of wild turkey as a kid. Yeah. So. Um... When I was growing up, Southern Comfort was a big one. Mm. I've heard of Soco. I don't even know what it is. Yeah, it, it's a whiskey. I, 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 I literally don't know what Southern what Comfort is. Was. Is it a whiskey? Yeah, it People in the comments. <laughs> it sounds like saying. it sounds like something in a mixer. Yeah, no, no, that's what that's what usually it was. It was Did you ever try a Southern Comfort? It was, it was a basically a mixer with Coke. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. But as a kid, mean, that's, that's what I My dad used to order, that's and then yeah, Jack Number Seven, right? Oh, so all right. So moving into it, go for it. Sorry. Uh, so yeah, so to go along with the wild turkey, yeah, yeah. I do have a quintessential American whiskey that I think. Whiskey liqueur, oh, it's a whiskey yeah. liqueur. Yes, yeah, so something like thirty-five percent. So I do have a quintessential American whiskey. To me, um, Jack number. Jack, it's funny because Jack Daniels number seven should have been on my list. I should have brought that bottle. I I've got like it. a one point seven five. I have like a one point seven five liter. Oh, I got um, another one. Maker's Mark. Okay. It doesn't have to be cast strength in the first edition bottle. three seventy-five, but. Maker's Mark is like a quintessential American whiskey, American bourbon that like people love. It's a weeder, um, tastes good. It's not magical. It's very boring. Oh yeah, one of the few companies that actually sell that whiskey with Audini. Is that cast strength? No, this is the regular. Oh, all right. But yeah, when they first released the new forty six, they also released these mini three seventy five cast strengths. So this is like, but yeah, it's really front of the line. How like this is probably the only. This is one of the number one whiskeys that everyone knows. Everyone knows the wax top. Yeah, it's but, famous for the wax. But they don't spell whiskey with an E. Yeah, it's weird. And, like, everybody dips, like, everything in the wax. So you dip whatever you want. If you go there and you pay them 20 bucks, you can dip your junk in the wax. Yeah. That's fine. They, they don't even care. They just, like, put it in the wax. Damn, Eric. Wait, you already got the black already? A black. Ooh. Uh, I want to try so the black, we'll, actually. We'll stay, we'll stay in the American region right now. Um, a quintessential bottle that I think most whiskey enthusiasts should have. I don't think it's really necessary, but it's just... <laughs> The visuals and everyone knows about it. It's it's only hot at first, Scott. Kind of like I, it. I'm thinking this might be on your list too. So I almost put Blanton's on the list, so, but the way that people idolize it, once you have yeah. a sip, you're like, so what was the hype again? I think it's a middle of the road type bourbon. I would go more for the gold or the single barrel. Probably the single barrel pick overall. But oh dang, this, I'd probably drink Fireball before. And this is where like me and Wally kind of deviate when it comes to what we think the today's topic is going to be about. Where I think everyone should have at least probably this bottle. It's probably not going to get drank as much, but it's definitely a ooh, what's that? Brings them to the liquor area. Then you can because the them. bottle looks pretty. Yeah, it's the bottle. It's oh man, story. we could do a whole we could do a whole show on gimmick bottles. I want to think this is a gimmick, per se. Because it's we a, made our shape like a icosa dodecahedron, and I then def- we put a horse on top. I definitely think that the horse cap with the different letters is definitely the gimmick part. I definitely I think the, the uh, cork that leaks all the time, no matter what you do, is really? kind of a feature. Yours doesn't leak? Nope. How old's your bottle? Uh, where is this bottle? Mine's like two years old and it, it definitely leaks. Uh, 2014. Oh, wow. Yours is magic. Magic, bro. All right. You going to stay in the Americas or are you going to... No. No, I'm not. So if you have more American, let's get this out of the way. Uh, John Wick drinks plans, I, but... I do have another American. But he's John Wick. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right, where's that other American? What else you got there? All right, so, and uh, we'll go one more. I have two Americans. Another one, since Wally I know is kind of weird, I put yeah. Eagle Rare in there, 10-year-old. I have had Eagle Rare, so and I love it. I, I love definitely think that going non-store pick with this one, I've had some really bad store Yes, pick. non-store pick. 
but um, Eagle Rare is definitely a staple. Easy to find. You can buy it in the what's it? The liter bottles, the really big ones. Yeah, one point seven five. You can buy it in the seven fifty, and you can buy it in the three seventy five. Yeah. And it's a ten year. I don't mind people pouring it if they have Coke or add water. Doesn't matter. It's not gonna yeah, hurt. Thirty bucks, bank. twenty seven dollars. I think it's sh- it just if someone's like I'm not into bourbons. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I want to cut it or I want to put Coke in it. I would just say, hey, take a sip with it neat first, and then add whatever you want, and it won't hurt you. Yeah. So that's one that's, of those. I'd put that under quintessential. Especially, yeah. It's funny that you're sticking to so much Buffalo Trace. Yeah, true, true, true. I think it's just the What's the other one? And then my other one is American Single Malt. Um, I'm going with Westland on this one. Interesting. It's a known brand. Um, I enjoy the Sherry Wood. I know Wally likes the Chocolate Malt on the American. It's a known brand, but it's hard to find in some areas. And this is where I think this, the Sherry Wood or the American – I want to say easier to find than their other single barrel stuff or their limited releases. But if Beat you can week. find this, like you can find this in Japan, you can find this in Asia. So like, I'm assuming you can find it in most States, but if you can, mm, I'll go find with it. If not, you can ship it. I think Caskers has this too. So time to buy one and definitely American single malt. There's a bunch of them coming out, but I think these guys kind of revolutionized the American single malt category. Yeah. They're trying to forefront. They're trying to so, head that up for sure. Um, definitely. I would prefer if, if you guys have to pick one up, the American. Try the American if you're into scotches. Wally loves that chocolate malt. It's Absolutely. very unique. It's very signet-like. And then uh, move on from there. Opinion of the Gariana. I don't know about the Gariana. Which Christian, one? there are good Scott? Eagle Rares out there. And I've never had a Scott, good... Uh, like, I've never had a Blanche that blew, blew my mind. Yeah, I'm going to start buying a case of Arbeck 10. A whiskey collection with whiskey from every state would be cool, but not every state makes whiskey, yeah. do they? Like, uh, are there any South Dakota whiskeys? Well, crap, they make it in Hawaii, so they must be making it in everywhere. Like, Utah has their own one. I mean, it might oh, not be a bad idea. Uh, what do you call it? Scott, sorry. Which uh, number for the Western Gariana? There's four. Versions. Oh, they did batches? Yeah. Oh, Every oh. year they do a new one. So I just, which which year you're talking about. But they're all Gariana, right? Yes, Gariana Wood? Um, Quirk is Gariana, if you will. Because if you do full Gariana, then it over oaks. What up, Richie? It's great. Uh,. Hey, Richie. <laughs> yes, all of them. Just explain your the Arianas. Uh, so, you like it? You don't like it? Uh, batch one I liked. Batch two passed. Batch three is okay. Batch four is okay. Uh, if you get one, you get oh, one. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, they've changed the recipes, and actually moving forward, this is a tidbit for you guys. Um, they're not doing the same thing for batch five, six, and seven. Oh, they're just trying to shake it up? Yeah, they're trying to change the way. It, cause, that makes sense. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I didn't realize there were different ones too. Uh, Are they really Scott, pricey? Just let me know which Probably like which one twenty, and I'll yeah, it should be around one hundred, less one fifty. Yeah, check it. Take it. Let's see batch was. Huh. Batch one's for sure, but I'm assuming you probably have batch three. All right, uh, I am now leaving the U.S. and then you can go wherever you want to go. All right. If we left the U.S., uh, so quintessential for whiskey. I know, I know, I know. It's difficult to find some of the two bottles I'm about to show. Okay. But one of them I know is very difficult to oh, find. So Hakushi 12. This is a good quintessential. I couldn't find my Yamazaki 12 bottle. <laughs> this is a good quintessential, slightly peated Japanese whiskey, like the Yamazaki 12 there. Right. So these are good quintessential Japanese whiskeys that are like, oh, you know, if you can find them, they're going to be like 100 bucks. But. It's nice because these are, oh, you should definitely have tried this. Don't make me break out a 21 right now. Like these are like definitely should have tried this because it, it does have good flavor. They are hard to find, but at the same time, it's like for a hundred bucks, they're still worth it. Even the Yamazaki 12, which I think tastes like bubble gum. It's still worth a hundred dollars. It's very floral. It's interesting. Um, yeah, the label's backwards. You, you need to cross your eyes. If you cross your eyes, Eric, you can read this label. No you can problem. read my label too. <clears throat> so that's all you got to do. Charles go. is turning Japanese. Uh, that song's about masturbation. He's closing his eyes. He's turning Japanese. <laughs> little little song fact factoid for you there, in case you wanted but to yeah, know. So, I'm mean, trying to win a trivia game. So, um, since Wally's going to Japan, hold on, hold on, hold on. There's an easier way to get to Japan. Right. That you don't have to spend a whole lot of money. Also, Suntory Tokyo. So, um, flavor wise, I I actually do enjoy this neat, which is weird because a lot of people like really? hate it because it's twenty five dollars. Um, but it is built for highballs. So you know, it's, chuck a bunch a of soda water at it. But flavor wise. I think it's actually super fruity. It's this is actually my enjoyable. second bottle of Toki in the last couple. Of years. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, I've got an extra. I've got a backup. So, yeah, Costco I, always has tons of them for like twenty six dollars. It is definitely a highball Part user. If you guys don't know what a highball is, yes, it's basically turning soda Japanese water. by the vapors. Correct, yeah. and it's a very inappropriate song for you. Because think about it, you know, your eyes are all squinty. You're turning Japanese. Wow, man, we know what you're doing. 
We you know are. what you're doing. Uh, so with Wally picking out the Hawk 212, <laughs> um, that's a peated version. So that's from... Um, oh, trying to make that segue there? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to segue into the other one. Um, then you got Yamazaki, which is more like what you said, bubblegum flavor. Harder to find, but if you could pick out of those two, I would pick the Yamazaki. And then for me personally, it would be the Hibiki 12 if you can find it. You you probably can't find it under... You can't... The blend. <laughs> But the Hibiki 12 is impossible to find. It's still sealed because um, I'm saving. Because it's delicious and you don't know how to drink whiskey. Yeah, I'm sad. But um, crack it on Christmas. <clears throat> That's what I would do. Oh, I have the special. I don't know. I'm, I have the special bottle here. Maybe I'll fill that special bottle with 12 after. I don't know. Crack it on but, your birthday. But um, yeah, if you guys can try that, I would go. Th- um, there's a bunch of other ones you can go for the Nika stuff. That's regularly available. <laughs> But um, if you can, Yama's, it'll probably be the Hakushu because like, you can still find that. Oh, Nika yeah. solid too. But I mean, like, I'm trying to think of like quintessential, quintessential. like, oh, you try like, Japanese whiskey, people are always like Yamazaki, yeah. Hakushu, ha- Hibiki. Hibiki 12 is like the thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's what I said. Also, now we know Scott does his with eyes wide open. So next. <laughs> he just stares yeah. at you the whole time. You like that? These two <laughs> bottles are quintess- to me quintessential scotch. Uh, yes. They're not the only quintessential scotch bottles, obviously. But to me, they're two quintessential scotch bottles that I think a lot of people make either the bu- jump from bourbon to scotch or people who just want to try scotch are like, I oh, I'd like to try that. About. And what do you think I'm going to bring up? Do we, do we show one, two, three? Both bottles or just one? Oh, uh, the one that you said that makes people go from bourbons uh, to scotch. Yeah, all right. One, two, three. I know what you're going to do. Damn it. Nope. I knew you I knew you were going to do the Caribbean cask. I knew it. So <laughs> the Glenmore NG10. All ex bourbon casts, a lot of people like it. Sweeter kind of flavor. To me, it's extremely boring and probably one of the worst of all the Glenmos. If you're gonna buy one by wow. private edition. Seriously, get a La Santa, get a Nectar Door, get friggin' everything. Hey. Everything else they do is better than this. I tried I all the rest it. of their lineup and then tried the ten and I was like I never tried the ten. Ever. Yeah, and you probably shouldn't. Maybe you'll like it. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe I, I will. It, no. Just H to the naw. Yeah. And and thank you, Christian. That was very smart and wise of you to mention. The 12? I was going to. The Balvenie 12 double wood. Because this is. The but... 12 double wood is just. It's quintessential scotch. You think of scotch, you think of Balvenie 12 I, double wood. I, I mean, pers- so, uh, Balvenie, I, I'm a big fan of their what they do. The 14 Caribbean cask I, is a sweeter one that yeah, really gets the bourbon head. For me, I think the four And they're really close in price. I think the other one's like 60, the other one's 70. I think this is 70. It was like 50 bucks? Yeah, so you're very. You're double wood 12 is cheap. In a range, right? So I personally think the Caribbean cast, um, this is probably the one bottle in my collection that I've finished at least three or four of them already in the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. Um, for some reason, I got one with the weird looking label with the blue pen. No, uh, they had issues back in the day when it was just, uh, this was actually called the Cuban cast in Europe, but then they had to change it because you can't bring. Correct. Stuff in it. But um, if you are going into scotches, this I think the Bavini 12 or the 14 should be on your shelf. All right. You believe that? To get through these, to get through these super, super quick. No, Hibiki back. 17, anywhere in a few years, correct. Haven't seen any of it, except for Hibiki 21, which I did in an airport for 350 bucks. Um, Harmony, you're right. Hibiki Harmony is a good choice. It is out there. It is, it is not, plentiful. Even Costco carries it. It's not a Hibiki 12 hmm? substitute, though. Just, just keep that in mind. It is not a Hibiki 12 substitute. It does not taste anything like Hibiki. Hibiki 12 is baller. At the start, and Hibiki Harmony is like, eh, it's yeah. all right. At the start, everyone's like, oh, this um, is the replacement. This is the replacement. It's not. Yeah, no, that was like one of the first like side by side reviews my brother did because he yeah. loves Hibiki. Uh, I found a seventeen in two thousand eighteen, but no twelve. Yeah, of course, twelve is, seems harder to be harder to find. I don't know oh, what, yeah. what that is. Because uh, Fittic twelve and Balvenie twelve. Christian, yeah, Balvenie twelve. You're absolutely right. Fittic twelve. I almost did, but that's too cliche. Also, I did that live stream with Tracy, and it just feels like fan too many boy. people were like, "Hey, what's up, fanboy?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, hell yeah, that was, that was me right there, config fanboy." Anyways. Uh, Glenmo 10 is yeah. good for the 10 years at the price point. Yeah, it's like 35 bucks. Um, I'd rather spend 35 bucks on. Oh, and guys, <clears> feel free else. to drop down what you guys think that we sh- we uh. We're, I got like four bottles left. Just drop down what you guys think that uh. Yeah. You guys uh, Richie Z, I have the two sale. I actually do enjoy the two sale. Never Kevin, I hate to break it to you. We're not doing Lafroig. We're not doing the heavily peated. I know. <clears throat> technically, Speak a Lafroig should. Oh, 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 never mind. Maybe Charles will uh, get everybody up to date on the quintessential peated scotches. I was going to throw an Ardbeg 10 in, but I was like, I just... I, and on that I, note, I here myself. is the Ardbeg 10 that Wally does not like. <laughs> oh, look, I <laughs> would hate myself if I showed you that bottle. Because <laughs> um, you guys would be like, why is it barely empty? And I'd be like, shut up. Eh, for me, I try it at least once a year. Um, <laughs> even though I'm not a beat head, I think 
at least you should have at least one peated in there for those peat heads that do come over. There are a lot of other peated whiskey that I taste better. I think that if you're a peat head, you want to dive into the deep end. You want to go into the Arbeck. Yeah, you want Lafroy. You, you know, you want absolutely. That, like, Arbeck one you want year old to make it. You know. You yeah, want you want Arbeck three year old. You want Kalila everything. It's. Ugh. I'm just saying, like, ugh. you just need it. Um, I personally don't enjoy it, but to, <laughs> Kevin loves it. Love that stuff. So I have to bring it up. I know yeah. Wally wasn't going to. Oh, I thought he was going to be at least a lighted peated. But, uh, nope, didn't even go lightly peated. That's right. And then, Actually, kind of I did, but I'll explain in a minute. And there he goes. The minute is done. So there you go. Oh, so are we? You got your bottle. That's, that's, that was your 15 minutes of fame <laughs> if you like Pete, because nobody does. <laughs> All right, and the last two bottles I have are whiskey, but they're like, I'm going to call these quintessential, uh, what did I want to use? Like quintessential luxury whiskeys. Okay. So one of these is a whiskey. I know it, yeah, it, is, it is slightly sherry, um, but you barely taste it. Uh, so... To me, these are two quintessential whiskeys that represent luxury because, you know, and everybody's like, oh, have you ever tried And it's like, okay, so, yeah, I've tried that. So uh, the first one, of course, like I said before, JWB, I know not a lot of people like it. It's it's funny that you said peanut whiskey, though, because to me, this just tastes like Lagavulin with a little bit of, like, final or whatever else they have. I don't know why. So here's the thing. I had another batch that tasted like French vanilla ice cream. This batch tastes like Lagavulin 16, and you might as well put Lagavulin on the label. So yeah, my blue label is from like the nineties. Yeah, exactly. So JWB is super famous for that, right? Like, they're this is a super famous brand. So when people think of luxury, yes, they think of a two hundred dollar bottle. Well, but at the same time, it's like stuff. it's a blend. Yeah, and it's a blend. It's a blend. Yeah, and and since you're so. segueing me into blends, uh, oh man, no, I didn't even get the other luxury one in. Oh, I'm sorry. Everyone should have feel free have a compass box. Blend. Which that might as well be luxury. It's a hundred dollars for a uh, blended grain. For me personally, um, I was going to get the Johnny Taylor. Walker Blue, but then I'm assuming Wally would have done it, or you know, that's a bit too high point. But for me, having a blended whiskey when people, because you're going to get some snobs and be like, "Oh, blended whiskey sucks. It should be a, a single malt," you know, and so on. When you pop out one of these, like a hedonism, you know, a luxury whiskey. Oh, you guys, change everybody's mind. Change, They'll like, be like, "Oh, this is a blend." Yeah. Why is this it's so not good? Just Johnny Walker, or you know. Um, Crown Royal or whatever, right? So, yeah, it's super sweet. Um, I don't know if it's Scott a good Spirit. intro whiskey because you're getting people hooked on hundred and ten dollar bottles. Hey, man, like some people <laughs> don't drink like us. We, oh, not even like us. Like they don't drink every day. Even yeah, that's true. I mean, I don't. <laughs> that is like us. Yeah, but um, yeah, and Scott, you're in here, dude. If you have any recommendations on which ones um, people should try out first, let us know. Come to Boxner. Uh, Votary Scapa. I do like the Arcadian, and I do like their 16. I don't know that I would call this quintessential. I think most people don't discover Scap until, like, way late in their whiskey journey. I can read up then. And just much not as known. Christian, Cherry Bombs. Yeah, we could talk about Cherry Bombs, and maybe I'll do that in literally one second. Episode? Episode? All right, or, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You had one eh, more. Not in one second. Uh, Open 18, Richie. That, so Open 14, yes. I mean, that's even been in, like, Newsroom, the TV show. But, um, no, Open 18 is just 18. No, they had the 14, they had the Little Bay. Like a Little Bay separate. That's very... It's got a lot of salinity. It's Spice good. Street, yeah. uh, Open 18, though, is very unknown. So I can't go Open with that in one. General, too, is, yeah. uh, Compass Box. Compass Box. So everybody likes Compass Box for blends, but I think they're just... Most of them are just good. Okay, so not if, like, if price point went down by 20 bucks, you'd be like, you'd see a different tune. Right? If price point went down by $40, 40 you'd bucks. see a different tune. Yeah. And, that, and that's what it is. I think it's just price point. So it's not the quality of the whiskey. It's just the price yeah, point. Yeah, if... Also, if hedonism was sixty dollars, I'd be buying it off the shelf like half nuts. Half would be freaking hedonism. Man. Seeing hedonism at one hundred and ten dollars, and then like very, very that would be my no. cigar whiskey all the time. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So go to brand for blends. I don't have a go to for blends. I really do. Oh, like really. of the five hundred fifty six hundred bottles that I have, most of them open. Like blends just aren't yeah. high on my list. They're just. I mean, JWB to me should be half price. And it's a decent blend at, at hundred bucks. 100, it's a good man. blend. That's that's what I was. But like, at, the now. only blend that ever made me want to spend money was Hibiki Twenty One specifically. Yeah, Hibiki Twenty One. I have dropped coin for because ninety five dollars <laughs> a bottle. And I thought amazing. that was expensive. I wish I bought another case. <laughs> yeah, two ninety five. I should have bought all of them. All right. Uh, what's your next bottle? Uh, my last bottle. My last bottle. I got two more. And next bottle uh, is again uh, to me way. again quintessential Scotch luxury. Um, it's just. Like, there's no going wrong with this. And even more so now than ever before. So this is that 96 that I found yeah. on the shelf and spent way too much money on. Um, but, <laughs> did, or did I spend enough? Uh, yeah, old McAllen 18s. Like, this is how they made that reputation. This is how they got famous. Guys, remember old. This is how, old, 
like literally this is how they got known for oh it's McKellen that's you know sharing, like man. ooh, ooh. Uh, even sharing. the McKellen 25 I had the I've had an old McAllen 25 and I had like I had an old McAllen 25 for like 140 bucks for a pour and it was incredible. I blew people's minds with it. Yeah, my, my dad like I shared that pour with like about how McAllen's three of the were big for him and Yeah, but when we were in San Francisco, we tried the 2017 and I was like yeah. Um I, <sighs> this is one Okay, so I got two bottles here that I'm surprised Wally didn't break out. So Ooh. Highland Park 12 Lightly peated. Yeah, that's a staple. So, so Votary, know, Votary, Votary, Votary said, said Highland Park like, 12. Uh, I want to segue into it, but I want to cut you off. So Highland Park. Yeah, Park, Light Pete. Having this in there, uh, people that don't understand Pete, you give them the R bag, they freak out. Tell them yes. there's different types of Pete. Highland Park 12 is definitely 15. I would, If you have the coin, I would probably do that more than a 12. But oh, what's funny good. is the 12 to 15 and 18 all kind of taste a bit different. They still have the house. Just get the 18. So, and then the 18 for is me, fire. I want to say the luxury but when I bought this bottle back in the day, it was definitely one of those celebratory bottles. Break it down and having a bad day or whatever. Was it Glenfiddich? Doers 12? Glenfiddich 18. Oh, yeah. Glenfiddich 18 so, solid. I haven't told Wally this. The small badge. This has got a small place in my heart just because, like, this was probably the most expensive bottle I bought at that time. I wasn't sure oh, about wow. it. And it's like a hundo. You know, it's one of the cheapest 18s you know, out there. It's crazy, right? Like, at that time, it's like when you had all these good whiskeys that sub 100, spending $100 on something, especially when I had a little paycheck back then. So this was it. There's only been a few times that I've actually, you know, had to drink it, but um, definitely a big place. And if you guys want to have that bottle, that I don't want to spend too much money, but I want something to celebrate with. This is a yeah, that tastes thing. fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. That's an older one too. Yeah, this is a very old one. Yeah. But yeah. Uh. Yeah, so know. yeah, go to blends. Like I said, Hibiki definitely. Go to blends. Johnny Walker Black. We missed out on. <sighs> Eric Johnny Walker Black. Meh. If you like Pete, sure. Like smoke, great. Johnny Walker Black 2049. Yeah. I'm going to go buy the second bottle that my store has, and then there's no more. Like, 2049 did it right. At 49%, whatever they changed the in the Johnny Walker Black blend, it wasn't just marketing. That's the worst part. It's like, yes, it's a dopey bottle, because you're like, yeah. it's from the future. It's a gimmick. It's a nice but then bottle. you taste it, and you're like, holy balls. This is so good. Damn, Christian. Uh, if, if you don't have one, Johnny Walker, man, Black, I, would, awesome. I would pick up a Fit of man. Talisker 10. So, okay, okay. So, Talisker 10, I'll give you. Like, I, I had tried the Talisker Scorm, Storm before I ever tried HP. It's similar type of peat, like, in it. It's more, like, smoky and floral peat. So, Talisker gets, definitely gets a shout-out. That's my bad yeah, for not, go, not ever uh, remembering Let them. us know what uh, big peat things. Since we're not big peat heads, I bet Fiddick 18 for 55. Yeah. Or Dang. even the people that watch this later. Not a big fan of lightly peated. Go big Peter. go home. Then he's going to like Lefroy cast strength. He's going to like Lefroy 10. He's going to like Colila everything except for their, even their unpeated though, unpeated style, which is still peated. God forsakenly peated. Um, what else does he like? I'm, he likes, I'm, I'm, uh, of course, Lag Lagavulin. Yeah, yeah that's probably Lagavulin. low on his list because it's not but even, all the islands, even Buna and uh, Brickladi. Like, I can I can deal with Laga 16. I, I can deal with the Lagas. I can't deal with the uh, Except Buna. <laughs> Buna is like so good. I think it's funny how Buna's just there and they're still <laughs> rocking it, even though they're not big people. Yeah, it's insane. Buna, but Buna is such like a weird flavor profile. They're if like, you don't like ocean different. water, if you don't like ocean water, you're like you're not gonna like it. And I'm not a big Buna. I, I don't have a lot of Buna. So oh, I need to Buna something. twelve and eighteen, freaking eighteen, man. Oh god, freaking red tide, so good. Yeah. Johnny Walker Black, the breakfast of champions. Yeah, okay. Ah uh, man, Johnny Walker Black. It. When I was a kid, that was always a mixer. Except Buna, that kills me. So you like Brooklady though, but half Brooklady yeah. stuff is unpeated also. Like, uh... Yeah, yeah, like, because the sherry kills a lot of the. And that's the why, peat. like, I could always deal with the. Lag and that's why I like the distillery edition. I can't, I can't do the, I can't do the. Thanks, Ardbeg. Diageo. <laughs> Except, what, did we have a twenty-seven-year-old Ardbeg? No, it was twenty-two, 22 and, and it was still. And that's okay. It was still twenty-two. Is still strong. It wasn't that It bad. was still strong in the force. Like, even you were like, strong. like, I need to run away. <laughs> No, I think the oldest one that I've ever had was the uh, Lefroy 32. Yeah. And there I was like, okay, now it's good. So it's it like, still has a horrible like, nose. Yeah. But the level of peat, and I know the PPM is the same across the years, but like it's so much more toned down. Yeah. And yeah, STD, the Buna 18 is so fire. I need to get some Buna in my shelf. But maybe that my works. friends definitely called it like Red Tide, and I'm like, call it whatever you want. I don't care if it's freaking ocean water. It tastes great. Oh my gosh. Like they bring the ocean to your face. That's always a good thing. That was Paul John coming out with Buna. Ooh. Ah. That sounds like me, man. Maybe I'll reach out to um I mean this Paul John Nirvana's good. Oh, Cray. Yeah, I'll reach out to him. I I'm a big they're, fan of They're standard. Their Nirvana's good. Their Christmas one was Christian, good. Thanks for looking at me. Have, Appreciate it. They have yeah. 
Correa's tasting was amazing, though, to be fair. Like, the way he broke everything down and had all the flavors there. Well, that was he, a lot of fun, actually. He was an influencer, and he was also, uh, like, a liquor guy, so. Yeah. Smart. Yeah, I remember talking to him when he lived in Turkey. Oh, like, through DMs. Really? Like, we talked for for years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, guys, um, feel free to reach out. I guess, just like everyone else, we were locked down. Um, I got a stay-at-home notice. I'm assuming while you – oh, no, you are essential, so you have uh, to I've been at work every day. Yeah. Tell me about it. <laughs> Stay at home. I yeah, wish. Yeah. Um, Wally just talked about that earlier um, with the Nirvana today, so um, I hopefully have that in the mail soon. I've reached out, uh, Corey's reached out, so uh, excited to try it. It took, yeah, it took them quite a while to send and, it out. Actually, and it's gonna take a while like, to with this, just because of the fact that we have the whole virus e thing. Um, yeah. And then next week, I do have some bottles coming in, so I'm excited about that. Um, I'm assuming Ooh. the SCDs probably jumped on that uh, free shipping as well. Of course, um, free shipping, yeah, guys, free shipping. Keep, keep an eye on your distilleries. Uh, a lot of them are actually closed down. Some of them are doing amazing stuff. They're actually making hand sanitizer. And yes, lots products, of locals. Amazing. Uh, be careful though. Um, there's been some reports that uh, the methanol in some of them are a bit high, so they're kind of regulating that. So be careful if you do use that stuff. I don't think people are trying to kill you, but there have been reports in other countries as well. People trying to distill stuff and got sick and died. So. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing at Eric with yeah. the stay drunk notice. Stay drunk notice. <laughs> He's so I ridiculous. Sadly, it's hard for me when I do uh, voice chats at work because they all see this view that you guys are seeing. So a lot of them are like, Ooh, "Oh, so alcoholic. An alcoholic." So uh, that's yeah. the nice thing about working where I work because you can't work outside it. But yeah. Uh, yeah, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this uh, brought a little bit of a smile to your face with this uh, stuff that's going on. We will continue streaming every Tuesday. Uh, give us topics if you need, uh, if you can. That'd be very beneficial for us. Wally found this one. When he was out of the shower. I was in the shower. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't turning Japanese. Don't worry. I really think so. Uh, but yeah, unlike your, unless you're like Scott and you keep your eyes open, uh, we say. <laughs> oh God, deuces. <laughs> <laughs>